It's the new year. A lot of people are thinking about new life goals and starting new businesses. So in this video, I thought it would be helpful to share with you the three things I wished I knew as a beginning business owner. So you can learn from my mistakes and shave years off your journey and get to success faster. Hi, my name is May Pak, and I help makers, artists, and designers make a living from selling their handmade products online. If you're new to my channel, a little bit of a quick background. I've been selling my own handmade jewelry, and I've been in this online business world for 15 years now as of this recording. In 2020, my husband and I made it to multi-million dollar status with our businesses combined, so I've definitely been through a huge adventure to get to where I am today. My hope for you is that it won't take you 15 years to get there, but just a fraction of that. So the first thing I wish I knew about was the different types of business models online and how each one works best with different marketing strategies. For example, a content-based business like a YouTuber or a blogger makes money in very different ways than someone who is a service provider like a photographer or a graphic designer, for example. Someone who makes money as an affiliate and promotes other people's products and then gets paid a commission requires different forms of marketing than a business that sells pre-made products from China on Amazon. And someone who sells coaching for $10,000 is also going to be different from everyone else I just mentioned. So you have to be very clear where you fit in and what you want to be. It's best also if you don't try to create some sort of new category of business model like this, because then you just get really confused and your business will take ages to take off. So if you're a handmade business owner and you sell physical products, what it takes to make a business like that successful is not the same strategies as a service provider or content-based business. And that is the biggest trap I fell into that cost me a ton of money and a lot of time in the beginning. And it's the same trap I see people fall into over and over again, even today. When I first started my business, there weren't many books or courses about how to start a handmade business. Most resources out there were for businesses in general, and mostly that was for service-based businesses or coaches or bloggers. So I spent a lot of money on programs and courses that were designed for people like them, but not for my type of business model. And this is a problem that's still true today. There are more courses out there than you can buy, and they're not all suited for the handmade business model. Like I was taking courses on Pinterest, blogging, Instagram, and it all just felt really hard to apply it to my own business because so much of what I learned, I felt couldn't work for my business. So just be smarter than me when I first started and be aware of the different business models. And that way you can be more selective on what you decide to do with yours in who you listen to for advice and what strategies you adopt for your business. The second thing was I wish I had invested more in the beginning. As someone who started with nothing completely from scratch and built businesses that now makes us millions of dollars now, I can tell you that there is a huge difference in how I valued investments. Back when I was barely making any money, I obviously couldn't afford to pay big money for in-depth programs or really in-depth coaching. So I would constantly spend like $10 here, $90 there on little eBooks and mini courses that didn't make an impact in my life or business. 2018, which is 12 years since I started, was the first time I actually paid $12,000 for the year to work with a coach in a group setting. It's such a huge leap and a big mental shift. It was definitely very scary. And then in 2019, I spent $15,000 for a coach that ended up not working out and I was out that money. And then in 2020, I spent even bigger money, $46,000, across three different coaching programs. Now, I don't think it is a coincidence that our businesses surpassed seven figures for the first time in 2020. Before I got to that point though, I had always seen other people invest big money like this. And I always wondered what it was like. I thought, do I have to invest big money in order for my business to grow? And what I've learned coming out from the other side of this experience is the short answer is yes, but it's not that simple. So yes, in very simplistic terms, 
the more money you invest, the more your business will grow. One thing that we discount or are unaware of is how much you commit to something when you have so much at stake. Like, if I spent $25 on an ebook, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I never got around to reading it, right? But if I spent $10,000 on a program, you bet I will do whatever it takes to make that investment worthwhile. That mental switch gives you an incredible sense of accountability and healthy pressure that I think we all need. Where it gets more complex is you don't want to spend big money just for the sake of it. It has to be extremely calculated. There are many coaches and programs that would gladly take my money, but I was very careful in vetting who it was I was giving my money to, what kind of service they provide, what other people say about them, and more importantly, what I needed to do to make it work well. I also took my time to wait for the right investment to come my way. And for me, I had decided in 2019 that would, it would be to invest in YouTube. So the majority of my investment went into anything YouTube related. So hindsight is always 2020, right? And I don't know if I could believe or be convinced when I was younger that this is the way, especially when you don't have $10,000 to spend in your bank account, right? That makes it so much more impossible. I think you just have to go through the trials and tribulations and to experience this for yourself to really see what I'm saying. The third thing I wish I did when I was just starting out was to reach out to create a community sooner. I'm talking about that community of friends who are in the same boat as you and who you can trust and talk to. It wasn't until eight years after I started that I finally found some friends that I would dare call lifelong friends that I love and who get what I do. And I can tell you that they've made a huge impact on how I've shaped my business and my life. They give me confidence. They listen to me complain. They can help me problem solve. They help me keep me accountable. They challenge me. They help me go after my dreams. But for many of the first few years, I was so alone, especially since back in the day, there were so few people selling handmade products online. Etsy had just been established. There were no craft stores where I lived in Malaysia. And so everyone who was physically around me, like family or neighbors or school friends, they had no interest in what I cared about. If you're in a similar situation, my biggest tip for you is to reach out to people, even if you're afraid. Put yourself out there. So join some Facebook groups or message boards and put a call out that you're looking for a friend. That's what I did. I know it sounds crazy, but it worked. It didn't always work out, but all of my lasting business-related friendships that have turned into just life friendships have come from doing exactly that. And having that kind of support from people who get it will make this whole journey that much sweeter and easier. If anything in this video resonated with you, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments or if you want to share your own three things you wished you know when you first started. Like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to my channel for more handmade business tips and advice and then stay on to watch this next video on the screen.